What up, everyone? MCI ADP Studios. We're sitting here with uh, James Seville, other known as, other known as Slevin, and many other things. A few other things, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the Mixing It Up podcast, and thank you for coming on. I really oh, appreciate it, bro. Me, man. Yeah, hell yeah. So, here at the podcast, I say this every time. People probably got sick of it, but it's you know to educate and inspire. Like, I want to try to give something back. I want people to get things out of it that you know when they listen to the podcast and uh i always kind of start with the backstory of how i know people Mm -hmm. i don't necessarily know everybody that comes on here so that's kind of cool you know for the the networking opportunity but um you know i remember back in the day you used to book some shows and some stuff that was kind of at a a place (laughs) yeah, yeah yeah so that was kind of our first um you know time time kind of meeting each other and if i remember correctly i was a complete asshole at that time too i think we all were at that time i mean that was a weird era man that uh uh, i was i was actually driving over here and i was like man when did i meet ingersoll like and i think it it started at envy like that was that was the beginning of it right there yeah and i just remember like um you know, first impressions are are one thing, and it, I think we got off on a bad foot about something stupid about the door or some shit like that. <laughs> like we we're trying to carry equipment in or something. And it was just like it's just funny how you evolved and grow, and you kind of look back and you're like, well, you know, what 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 did that even have to do with anything? You know, beneficial. But that was a fun time in my life. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was that was fun for me too, man. I. uh those those were cool times, but that was all at Club Envy, right? Is that where you did yeah. most of your booking and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, I did a little bit of booking because I started out at uh, Landmark. For those of you guys who don't know, that's Ski Town Tavern. Um, so I started out there like in late 2005, something like that. And I was a, I was a door guy. Oh, okay. And then um, I started booking a couple of friends' bands there, and then uh, Envy opened up, and doors opened, and boom. Okay. Um, so, yeah, James also, I mean – in a roundabout way, you're pretty much responsible for all of this. I mean, <laughs> because the computer that is running EDB Studios for the last, it's probably been, what, two, almost three years now since I'd you built that? I'd say it's been pitch? pretty like, close yeah. to three, because I think that's yeah. a six series Intel. I mean, that's that's still one of my most favorite builds, because it's simple, it's clean, it's not like too over the top. And I, I'm glad it's still running for you, man. That yeah, makes me the, super happy. Yeah, man, the thing runs like a freaking top, so... Um, so yeah, you could thank James for anything EDP has put out for the last year. You're the talent, man. I, you know, as a, we were talking about content creation, like I, I've been streaming for two years now. Like I've seen people just do it with PS4s and a terrible webcam. If you want to do something, you're going to do it. That was just a tool that I helped build for you. That's yeah. it, man. But I do appreciate that. So today, um, I was kind of talking to James beforehand. A lot of times people come on the podcast and it's like, okay, this person does this. They're a photographer. This person does this. They're a videographer. This person does this. Well, James is, uh, you know, he, he does a lot of things and he does a lot of things well. But today we're going to kind of just um, – I had to kind of narrow down some things because we yeah. can go on and on and about all the shit that you do. And, and I don't and, shut and, up, know. so. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's why we're here to talk. So, um but the uh, we're going to talk about streaming because I'm really interested in that. I know that's something you've been doing. Uh, we're going to talk about some networking because I think that, you know, just watching you on social media, knowing you, you know, just seeing the networks and the friendships and the relationships that you build. And I think those are so important. So I definitely want to get your insight on that. We're going to talk a little bit about electronics. I mean, oh, yeah, and that's kind of, you know, that's you from that's my that's yeah. that's my core. That's 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 me. Cool. Yeah. So uh, we're definitely going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some community involvement because that's another one one thing that always inspires me about James is no matter what, he's involved with community business, giving back and, and doing all these things. And hopefully uh, um, being able to speak to him, I can get involved in some of those things as well, you know, after the fact. And uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about business, you know, running, running the business and what you're doing right now. So there are some things we're going to talk about. And... Uh, I've always admired your work ethic, man, because I see you, you know what I mean? You're always working, and I know you're not the traditional nine-to-five, go-to-the-corporate kind of job, no. but you've always made it work. You've always you know, done what you've had to do to kind of live with passion and do what you like to do. Is that fair to say? I, mean, I would say, yeah. I mean, there's been times where I've definitely, I mean, 
there's there's some days I just don't want to wake up, so I'll just I'll sleep in and you know call it a day. But right, yeah, you know, my work ethic has been hit or miss over the past couple of years. But this past year, especially with uh, Crash Masters Two opening, um, has been a real big thing. Like trying to focus down, make sure I'm there every day, and all that fun stuff, and making sure to be an example for any employees that I hire. That's the biggest thing. Cool, that makes sense. So, um, and then I know you were kind of doing some wedding DJ stuff, and that's probably <laughs> gone by the wayside now. That's, is that, I think it's been about two know? years since okay. I did that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That was a lot of fun, though. So, why don't, you know, for the people that don't know you, James, um, why don't you just give a little backstory, you know, kind of, you know, how you got to where you are now and, uh, you know, your mindset on things, you know? So, I'm originally from South Jersey. Um, I was born there and then moved back and forth between Pennsylvania and New York and stuff like that as, as I was younger. My mom moved us out here when I was 14, um, and I hated it. I hated this town. I hated this state. I hated everything about it. And you guys can misquote that all, all that you want, you know. But um, Snip it right there. <laughs> um, about, 16, about 16 or 17, I set out on my own. I was bouncing from place to place. And I think that's when my networking really started because, you know, you don't really get to know Muskegon until you are living in Muskegon, if that makes any sense. Like, just out there. I mean, I was bouncing around from place to place for quite a while. Um, and then... Like I said, 2004, I kind of stumbled into Landmark, and that kind of just started the whole, like, uh, just meeting everybody I possibly can. I've shaken thousands of hands in the past few years, um, and just bouncing from Landmark to Club Envy, Unruly, um, that really got me to know the music scene here. That's how I met you. That's how I met just about every musician in this town, is just by being at the door or booking shows. Um, but computers has always been my biggest passion. Like, that's what I've been doing since I was, like, seven. My um, my great uncle sent me and my mom a computer from Hawaii, and back then like X-rays would just completely nuke. They would just kill everything on the board, or the or it was bad when it showed up. We didn't know, but when it showed up, me uh, it was dead completely. So me and my mom had to rebuild it. I was like, man, I love this. This is awesome. So it's just been a passion of mine since then, and now it's finally cultivated into this repair shop, which is nice. Okay, cool. So. Um, you know, I kind of, we talked about, you know, the work ethic and then, you know, you just living with passion and, and being able to take that passion and, and make your, you know, make something of it. And, uh, and you're also real. I like that. You don't hold back. You kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, even with your social media, like, it's like, you don't, you don't filter yourself. You kind of say, Hey, this is who I am. And, and I really appreciate that because you can see the being genuine to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And it was, it was way, it was worse a few years ago, but, um, you know, there's, you still got to put yourself out in a certain light on social media. That's the big thing. Like Facebook, I know inside and out, like I know how to work it and stuff like that, but I also know what I can and can't say and get away with. Um, and like, if you go back and like really dig through my post five years ago, I was a real loud mouth asshole. <laughs> it was bad, man. Right, right. Um, I just had people that were, you know, I, I've, I've pissed a lot of people off in my day, but, um, nowadays it's more like, especially the past couple of years, I've been trying to focus more on positivity and I still get loud. I still get mad about stuff. I'm a, I'm a vocal feminist. Um, I really stand up for LBGTQ rights and stuff like that. Everything I possibly can to just to be heard because there's people out there that can't be heard. So if 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 I can shout once and change two or three people's lives, that that's that's all that matters to me. Um, but lately, it's also been you know focusing on promoting my business because you know I got to make money. But right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 been a fun ride on social media, learning it and um, just knowing what you can and can't say. I'm still trying to figure out Twitter though. If you if you can figure that out for me, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I I have my shit set up so it's like it is automatically post to Twitter, but I don't like read anything. And even if somebody reposts or retweet, I have no idea. I don't really mess with Twitter. Twitter is unforgiving, it's, man. Yeah. It's it, it everything that I put on Facebook, I can put the same stuff on Twitter, and I have like maybe half the audience there. Like it just doesn't fly. If they know it's not yours or it's not like original, like it's you have to interact on Twitter in order to be engaged. That's the biggest thing. It's it's completely unforgiving. If if you're just sitting there posting and just posting and posting and never interacting yep. getting back, that Twitter will just bury you. Well, the, yeah, that's the problem with Twitter is, you know, like it, there's so many fucking tweets and you have so many characters. So basically what happens is you got to tweet like 98 times a day. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And I don't, that's not how I, and, you, you and know I mean, me. that's kind of the way you're supposed to do it if you're like really involved. But Twitter's just one of those things where it's like, a, a, I don't know what the statistic is, but I read it sometime. A tweet lasts like 
36 seconds or some that's it. preposterous shit because like that, that, that feed's you know constantly I mean? rolling if you yeah. got thousands of if, if you are following thousands of people you're miss if you only check twitter like once or twice a day for like five or ten minutes you're missing like 99 percent of the content that's going out there and i can never keep up with it yeah how how would you do that you'd literally have to be on that shit all day i mean yeah like, you know yeah um <laughs> and there's people out there that have figured it out you know they just know what what they're doing and right they it works for them for me facebook's my number one social media 100 percent and that makes sense. I mean, you know, I can tell by a lot of your posts with the engagement uh, that you do get on your post, and I kind of watch watch that. You know, you get the likes and the shares and all that kind of stuff, but you do also ask the engaging questions, and you know what I mean? You yeah. get the people that follow you engage, and that's, you know, that's the, the number one thing is, is asking questions to get answers, because if you don't, I mean, people are just going to read it and scroll on by. So. Right, exactly. But then also po- posting content pe- people are interested in and, you know, funny shit or whatever it may be. You yep. know what I mean? Because you kind of cycle through it. So Like this podcast, you know. make sure you guys share it. <laughs> yeah, well, appreciate that. <laughs> and thank you for sharing it. I've seen that. So that, that was awesome. So um, let's talk about what we're uh, what, what you're kind of currently working on, man. I mean, you know, you kind of alluded to the Crash Masters, but where did that stem? Because, you know, when you built my computer, Excelsior computer Excelsior, repair? Excelsior, yeah. Yep. Yep. Excelsior? Yes. Yeah, I so- could never fucking say that right. So <laughs> that's... It was two things. It was uh, Stan Lee's catchphrase, Excelsior. And then um, uh, uh, the Excelsior was also a ship in Star Trek that was kind of like under the radar. It was like mentioned in like two movies, I think. Um, but it was the basis for the Enter- the Enterprise B. So okay. anywho, uh, nerding, after being done nerding out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... It was the Enterprise B sense, Mark II. That's yeah. what it was. But uh, I, lo- I love the <laughs> to name. To get real detail. To though. get real yeah. detail and real in-depth. Yeah. Um, so I started that in 2015. Um, basically, it was just me working from home, using the internet as best as I can. And to be honest, man, I slacked. I was lazy as shit on that, you know. Um, so I went and worked for Tony for a little bit for First Assured and helped him start and helped him out with a couple of other his businesses that he's been starting up. Um, and then uh, my partner Joe messaged me last March, so almost a year ago. Um, and he was like, hey, man, I want to open a second location. I want you to be my partner. And I was like, let's go. you know. So over the next few months, we just started building that up. And uh, we found a great location, learned a lot about setting up a partnership, which he's never done. Um, and neither have I. So uh, that was the biggest thing is getting everything legal and right and keeping it so like he owns Apple 100% and we're 50-50 on Henry Street. And uh, so they're two technically two separate entities, which is kind of cool. Um, but we got that all started and did a kind of unpro- unplanned launch in the middle of October. And we've just been rolling nonstop ever since. Sweet. Um, let, I want to go back just a little bit, though, because, you know, your computer repair and then he had the Crash Masters. Yep. So to start that, was that some kind of, you know, it's always like a little bit of a competition because it's kind of yeah. like, hey, this is, you know, this is what I'm doing and I'm trying to compete with these guys. And yep. then I didn't know. So what was your relationship like with him like beforehand or was it? Joe and I have always butted heads because I worked for him way back in the day. Okay. okay. Um, so, but I hadn't worked for him for probably three years at that point when I started Excelsior. And it wasn't really, a, I mean, it's always competition. I mean, everybody right. tells you there's not competition in the same uh, business, whatever, on uh, the same industry is, is lying to you. I mean, you're always out there competing against everybody. Right. I mean, you yeah. know that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so it was It was just, we always avoided each other as far as, like, mentioning anything about each other or anything like that, just out of respect. Um, and just because we knew if, like, we went head-to-head as far as, like, the internet canceling wars or whatever go, it would just get ugly. And I'm glad that I'm glad that we chose that route because um, when he messaged me in March, it was just a simple, you know, let's go, let's just do it, let's just make this happen. And laying down Excelsior wasn't really a big deal to me. I mean, that was just something that was running for a while. It worked great. Um, I met a lot of new people, not a lot of new clients, that now still come to Crash Masters. Okay. Um, I mean, I would I posted something last week. I think I said like 75 percent of the people that I that that come through the door are people that I know. Um, yeah, I've seen that, and yeah. it, and we've been nonstop busy f- since we opened. So that's it's humbling, you know. It's really really awesome to have all that networking over the past decade or so pay off, you know. Yeah, and uh, so I see you do a lot of councils and shit like that too. Huh? Yeah. So how how does that does that just all part of your skill set? How did you learn how to do that? You know what I mean? Because computers are one thing. Hey, put this together. You know what I mean? Like, 
and all that. But then, like, I see you doing a lot of council repair and a lot of council work and, yeah, and that so, kind of shit. And I'm just like, well, that's that's a whole nother. That's got to be a whole different. <laughs> I era, just right. I, I mean, just came up with this catchphrase like two weeks ago. I was like, if it's got a processor, I can probably work on it because um, we cover phones, consoles, and the consoles were something that Crash Master has been working on for a little while. Okay. And I decided to just go balls to the wall and just jump into it. I was like, I want to learn everything I can about how these things work. And that's how I've always been. If I start working on something and learning how to work on something, it's just nonstop for me until I get it perfected. Um, so I took over. So Henry Street handles all of the console repairs for Crash Masters. So if you drop it off at Apple, I go grab it. I'll work on it, bring it back the whole nine. Okay. And I'll communicate with the customer the whole time. Um, but it was literally just starting out with like, the simplest thing, which is diagnosing the hard drive. Um, and then we did get ones that come up with power issues. And then we'd get some that controllers don't connect. And then you just learn and figure out why these things work. And 20 years ago, you wouldn't be able to do this because as great as the internet has been for the past 30 years, 20 years ago, the internet was junk. Right. You know, oh, if yeah. you wanted to repair um, a Nintendo system, you had to like get the repair manual from Nintendo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, nowadays, it's there's wonderful sites out there like iFixit, which are all about right to repair, which is something that Apple's been battling for a very long time, the right to repair your own devices. Yeah. Um, so using sites like iFixit, YouTube, um, and just experimentation and learning myself about what does and doesn't work, because there's a lot of bad info out there. Um, I bricked two or three of my own consoles learning a lot of this stuff. It's like I don't test something out on a customer's console yeah, or computer. I do it on my stuff first because if mine breaks, I can pay to fix it. But then if – let's say I broke your computer and lost all your data, that's that that's a really, really – that's not even expensive. That's just that's detrimental to everything. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. And all the time and effort and work that you put into it. You yeah, know? I mean and then, data and, is probably the most valuable thing on the planet. And, and, you know, even with some people, I mean, some people are so into gaming that that's important to them because that's what they do, you know? Yeah. So it's like, holy shit, I have all my stuff on this PS4. And I mean, that's a lot of freaking work, man. You know, mm -hmm. I don't play a whole lot of games just because I'm so busy. I love yeah. playing video games, Same. you know? I uh, But I have noticed that, you know, sometimes when I got to take a break from the grind, the the constant editing and the uh, producing. You and, guys got to see the setup. It's ridiculous. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, but sometimes you got to, you know, that's one thing I've taught myself over the last year. You got to kind of take a break. So then I've yeah. been, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get the PS4 back out, you know, d dust it off and, 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 uh, so I've been playing, I actually just got through Shadow of War, but it's like, you, you feel these sense of accomplishments, but then you're like, holy shit, I got 60 hours into this. I could have <laughs> did something else, but it's a lot of fucking time when you're like... <laughs> yeah, well, coming you know, from somebody who played WoW for 11 years, I stopped at Warlord of Destruction, which is like three expansions ago. You can dump a lot of time into something that doesn't seem valuable, but at the same time, I mean, like when I played WoW, I made a lot of good memories. I had a lot of bad memories, too. Yeah. Um, there was a point there where I was addicted to it. Like I had to play it every single day. I had to do the guild runs and it was just terrible. Um, but like nowadays I can sit down and play a game for maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Like last night I laid um, down in the living room, girlfriend was sleeping on the couch and I just played UFC three for like two and a half hours. That's like the longest run I've had in a video game for a while. And I play my backlog of games is just huge. I've got probably 300 games in Steam that just sit there. Yeah. You know, and there's like five that I always go back to where it's like, oh, look, new game. Let me spend $5 on this. Right. And then it'll just sit there forever until I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll try this out on stream or something like that. But right. that makes sense. You know, with, with the video game thing and it's, you know, you know, the cr people talking about, oh, I'm addicted to Fortnite and I'm going to sue Fortnite because I'm a, I'm addicted to it. And, and that's <laughs> just insane to me. It's just like you just need to fucking find something else to do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it, people that people do take that pretty far. But I mean, in the grand scheme of things, like we all do stuff to keep our mind busy to not face the existential crisis that we all might. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, that's why yeah. everybody wants to get MVP. That's why everybody wants to say, hey, fucking check my shit out because it it gets your mind off the fact that one day we're all not going to be here. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not going to be able to enjoy that. I yep. mean, and then that's just a basic human fact. You, you, can't, you can't avoid that at all. So with the video games... You know, sometimes escaping reality is cool. Just fucking getting it. You know what I mean? Because you don't think about all the bullshit and you can kind of get into the fantasy exactly. world for a little bit. 100%. So I don't ever knock the video game thing. I Like I said, I like playing them, you know. Yeah. But I'm also the type of person, too, where it's like, 
I like to play, like you said, maybe for an hour or two hours, yeah. and then after that, it's like, okay, I got other shit to do, whereas exactly. like, I can't do an eight-hour run or a... You I, know what I mean? Like I have, That's fucking tough, you I, know? I, I'd much rather enjoy sitting on YouTube for like three or four hours, just absorbing stuff. Like, I've been watching a lot of food tube, like okay. a lot of Sam the Cooking Guy, binging with Babish, stuff like that, just trying to step up my kitchen game a little bit. Um, but I will, I will sit on YouTube for hours, just absorbing new stuff and I'll jump from subject to subject, new computer stuff, food. I'll even look at some car stuff, like all kinds of different things. Um, and that's where I'm feel like I'm being productive because I'm learning. Um, I still love my video games. I love them a lot, but it's, I would rather put more time into, you know, growing this so I can further grow my bank account, I guess, you know? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. I do the same thing. Um, I'll, I'll sit down to eat, you know, I'll be here by myself or something and I'll sit down to eat something, but YouTube goes on. Yeah. What, what are, what are the producers talking about? How am I going to, you know, make money off of selling music and license it, you know, exactly. I mean, uh, I, then you feel like at least, Hey, I'm sitting here, you know, consuming something, but I'm learning at the same time, like you said, you know, so that's awesome. Always in that growing mindset, you know? Yeah, always have to learn. And I was a lazy kid, you know. <laughs> so trying to learn a lot has uh, has been like the number one thing on my mind all the time. It's just continue to learn, continue to grow. Because if you're not learning, you're just getting stagnant. And especially in the tech repair world, if you're not keeping up with the latest trends and stuff, you'll get left behind in a heartbeat. Yeah, and that and that kind of goes back to you know a common theme that we talk about. It's like. Um, even even before, you know, it's the twenty year journey. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You talked about the the task cam I had over there, yeah. the old yeah, four yeah, track. Yeah. You that know? thing it's is just like <laughs> <laughs> it's not only dusty, man. It's just that, that you can look at that and tell there's history with it. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It, you know, and then you just got to remind yourself. You know, this is kind of where I started. I didn't know everything to begin with, yep. but at least if I started there, this is where I could get to. You know, that's why I always you know. keep. Uh, I've got my USB Rock Band mic. Remember the game Rock Band? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's what I started streaming with, was just this little USB Logitech trash. Just it, it sounded terrible. But with that and my original webcam, I keep those around just in case. Like, Because, I mean, if you look at my setup now, it's it's a full mixer. It's, it's a 12-channel XLR mic. I've got a couple of webcams. Like, I've got monitors all over the place. And I always look at that little microphone. I'm like, you started right there. And looking at the history of my Twitch channel, like, you can see... Like there was growth there, you know, and I can when I when I saw that mixer, I was like, I know what he's got that for. Yeah. I know exactly why it's there. That's awesome, man. Yep. So, um, so segue into that. Let's kind of talk about that, man. Um, let, let's talk about the st streaming and and the Twitch and and you doing that. And then I know I did see you were kind of really consistent at it for a while. And then yeah. it seems, and then I know you were doing. I had the to business, schedule up until so, we opened the store. I was yeah. streaming three times a week: Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, eight p.m. Nine times out of ten, you'd catch me there. Like there was very rarely a missed schedule, and that's the most important thing. So tell tell me how you got into that, and and just how that came about, and and why you decided to do that. So you know? four years ago, um, whenever Overwatch came out, that's uh, it's a PC console game. That's a shooter. It's kind of like a meld of I don't know uh, Quake and uh, like League of Legends. It's like it takes the best things of team deathmatch and head to head so me and my buddy zach betts we started playing online because he lives in holland now and we just started playing online together and um we started meeting these other friends in the game and we started teaming up a whole lot more regularly and then we literally just became friends through overwatch like every two or three times a week we'd be streaming together or we'd be playing together and then zach started streaming and I'm, I had been dabbling in it every once in a while. I've got some, some archived old streams from like 2016 or 17 um, where it's just literally just my webcam and me playing Overwatch. And he started really getting into it, learning the craft. Um, and he's, he, when he launched his channel, um, we were there watching him all the time, being moderators, helping him out, sharing his posts, all that fun stuff. And I was like, man, this looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so right after I moved downtown, I was like, I'm gonna take a shot at it. So 2018, um, found out my computer wasn't powerful enough, and so I had a second computer there. Then we do what's called a two PC stream. So my computer sends out an output signal to the second PC, and that handles all the encoding and all that fun stuff. Okay. And I went live, and then I was like, okay, what's an affiliate? Okay, seven days, 50 followers, average viewers. Let's do it. So I streamed like every day for like two weeks. Got affiliate, um, and then found this group called TSAN, Twitch Streamers and Networking, and just really started learning. 
like got obsessive over it, f- learned about the green screens, how to set up a webcam, and I learned a lot about audio. Like, yeah, that's th- to me one of the most important parts of a stream is audio. If you come in with just that webcam sound, and I can hear your keyboard yeah. clacking with every <laughs> single, th- <laughs> right. yeah, it's yeah. it's it's. It- Audio is so important. If it's out of sync, which mine was for a long time, I didn't realize different bit rates mattered, all that fun stuff. Um, So it just slowly started growing. um, And then I became one of the main admins recently, uh, about six months ago in that group. Oh, Um, So we managed like 14,000 streamers. Oh. And I was streaming every single day, like I w- or every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 8 p.m. to midnight, 2 o'clock, depending on how long it went. And it turns out it's not just about the video games, which I always thought Twitch just was about video games. Um, you meet, There's a lot of people on there that stream what you do. Um, they do stuff like this all the time. Like Twitch is vast as far as creativity goes, and it's great because other platforms like YouTube and Facebook are trying to get in on it. You know, and YouTube's doing pretty darn well. Facebook's video platform is trash. I said it. I hate Facebook's video platform. It's the worst. Um, but growth on Twitch is tough. You know, right. especially yeah. when you got people like Ninja and Shroud who just jump ship over to Mixer, and apparently Mixer's having issues now. But it's it's consistency. You just got to be set a schedule, go for it, do it, and just be willing to learn and take criticism. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, go ahead. Plan. No, you're good. I was just going to say, it, but you probably realized in, in that process, like how much work that is too, because you're so like, much work. you're like, fuck <laughs> man, I could go play video games on, that's on exactly stream. That's exactly what right? it was. Like, you're like, yeah, that's easy. Then you're like, oh, green screen. Oh, audio. Oh, mixer. Oh, fucking this and that. And then, right? <laughs> and then, and then networking. <laughs> right. So I would stream 12 to 15 hours a week, but I would put in 15 to 20 hours um, learning and watching other streamers and making friends on Twitch and stuff like that. It's its a lot of process, not to mention the technical aspect of it. I, I, I got a lot of shit when I started streaming. Like, a lot of shit. <laughs> like, you just play video games online? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I'm like, anybody can fire up a PlayStation 4 and go live. Right, yeah. It, it's not that hard because it, you just hit options and broadcast and boom and then yeah and up until recently that would go on facebook but they just removed the facebook integration um but if you want to stand apart now there are streamers out there that just fire up and they've been doing it since day one that's why they have a big audience but you're not going to get discovered on twitch doing that you're not going to get discovered on twitch at all so that's where you learn about the content creation yeah you you got in your instagram is huge by the way Holy shit. <laughs> I checked it out last week. I was like, damn, the dude's got like 6,500 followers. Like, yep. ridiculous, man. Blown up. But I mean, that's the hashtag management and content yeah. creation. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get discovered on Twitch, you've got to get discovered on Facebook or YouTube. So you've got to be creating other engaging content that may or may not be related to what you do on Twitch. So uh, when Vine was out, that was a big way. One of the biggest uh, streaming coaches out there, Harris Heller, he got huge on Vine way before Twitch ever happened. Um, him and his wife, they skyrocketed like with one video and they just made millions off uh, off of Vine. And now he's one of the biggest YouTube coaches out there as, as far as like streaming, etiquette, lighting, all that fun stuff because right. he's also a music producer. He's, okay. a, he's a musician. Um, so he's got a full studio the whole nine, but he's getting more famous off of his Twitch content than even his music was. So, oh, cool. Um, and then, like with the Twitch, that was like one of those things where, like, if you were an affiliate, like people would what they would donate to see you stream, or is it kind of like along the Patreon where they would give you, uh, you know, donations, or how how did that work? Because I know I know that you had you know certain people, you know. Twitch supporting has a, your supporting your Twitch you know, has a bunch craft, of different right? ways to make money, um, and at the end of it all, that's what we all want to do. We want to be able to play video games or do talk shows and make money on right. it. Right. Yeah. Um, following always helps out, but the follower number doesn't matter. Um, when you hit affiliate, that allows you to get paid from Twitch from Amazon. Oh, okay. So if you do, there's three levels of subscription. There's a five dollar, um, a ten dollar, and a twenty five dollar. Um, the five dollar one get you a certain set of whatever perks the streamer decides. Um, the ten dollar one, more perks, more emotes. Um, twenty, and then the, the the tier three is more emotes or whatever. Um, each affiliate starts out with one emote for each slot, and then as you hit certain mile goal or milestones, like 
number of subscribers, our streams, stuff like that, you can unlock more emote slots for each tier. Um, so each tier gets more um, beneficial to the person who's paying. Okay. And then you split that five, ten, or twenty five dollars with Twitch. Okay. So before, so they take half of everything after taxes are already taken out. So they'll take whatever tax for whatever state, and then you split it. So it's like two ten, I get per person who subscribes per month. Okay. So that's one of the main ways. That's why everybody vies for affiliate. Affiliate. You can get to affiliate super easy. It's they Twitch wants as many people as affiliate as possible because then they want to start making money. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's Bezos. Like you want, he wants to make as much money as possible. Yeah. Because um, you don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> Even <laughs> totally different podcast. <laughs> so the other an, any streamer can make money on Twitch without being an affiliate just by setting up a PayPal account. Okay, you can take uh, tips, not donations. Donations okay. and tips are one of those. It's a faux pas thing to say donations because normally you think donations as like charity and stuff like okay. that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so tips because you still get taxed on that income. Mm. Um, I get a 1099 every year from Twitch because okay. I had to fill out the if the 1099 paperwork when I was an affiliate. Um, and then if you are an affiliate, PayPal will send you a 1099. That makes sense. Um, so people can donate all day, and you can set up panels at the bottom of your stream that tell you who they who you are, what you do, um, top cheers, and we'll get into that in a sec. But um, like, and you can set up a donate button, and boom, they can send money directly to you through whatever way you want. It's totally unregulated by Twitch, and you can get that money however you want. Oh, okay. So that's how people also use Patreons, which you okay. mentioned. Yeah. And then the other way is uh, Bits. So Bits is Twitch's in-chat currency. Okay. Um, so you can buy so many Bits, and it's, it essentially boils down to one Bit is one penny. Okay. So you can set up like campaigns to have the highest cheer per stream, and you can track that at the top of your chat, too. So... People want to get at the top of that, and you can get hype. And Twitch just introduced hype trains. So people start cheering a whole bunch of bits or gifting a whole bunch of subs to chat. Um, it'll start up this hype train, and you can level it up and get more and more hype. And then all of chat gets temporary benefits. Like it'll unlock emotes for everybody and all kinds of fun stuff. So Twitch cre gives us ideas and ways to make more co or to make more money um, because by us making more money through their platform, they make more money. That makes sense. Yeah. So let me ask you something though, because you know the um, I'm learning right now as we go. But are, so these people, they're are they either a vicariously living through you because they want to be a Twitch, or they're just fans of yours because you have a great personality, or you're good at the game, or or is it a combination of A, B, and C? It's or, all of the above. Yeah. So you know? it's just like, hey man, I really like James's you know, Twitch channel. So I'm going to watch him on Tuesdays and I'm like, Hey man, I want him to shout me out because yep. That type, type recognition. Thing. Like, Hey, you know, fuck everybody me. wants recognition. Um, I mean, you'll see, uh, streamers like Tim, the tap man, he'll, he'll average like 17,000 people for hours. 17,000 people Holy watch shit. and his chat is just non-stop and yeah. at that level you're not reading every chat message no no you can't but he, and if, <laughs> if you watch his notifications people donated 25 bucks 50 bucks subscribe for their 37th month Jeez. and you know it, that's just a that's a blip in his radar right like he never he barely acknowledges them and they're okay with that but at the same time like there there was a point in my time where i would i would throw out a 25 dollar donation just to get my name on that screen mm, okay because somebody would be like, oh, who's this guy? Maybe go check him out. And it's a bad way to grow. Don't do that. <laughs> do not. <Yeah. laughs> Spend right. as little money as possible as you can to grow your craft. Get what you need. Don't spend money on stuff like that. That's dumb as shit. Um, but uh, I was, when I first started out on Twitch, I was, like I told you, I was watching Zach. Like, right. Biff was my dude, not Biff, um, not Biffy the Beat Slayer, right, but yeah. uh, he went by Biff Tannen. Okay. Uh, he's a local EDM guy. And um, so we would, I would watch him, help him out, moderate for him, wanted to do it, started doing it. And then we would just go back and forth, watching, helping each other out. And then we just built our communities up. And there's there are people that just watch Twitch just like they watch TV shows. That's their main form of content consumption. Okay. That so makes it, sense, huh? I, I mean, I, had, I have full-time moderators that only... They only show up to mod for your, your stream 
And okay. there's a bunch of streamers that are out there like that. And bigger streamers, their moderators will get paid. Like they'll earn an income from that streamer's income. They'll pay them a salary every week or because every month. Because they make so much money off the and that and so that has grown over the last what five to seven years because people love watching. I mean, reality TV shit. Like, well, that and then you know, watching people play video games is a a thing. Like, I well, feel like, Twitch you started know, out like, as Justin TV, and it was literally a guy broadcasting his life twenty four seven. Oh no shit! It was just a reality TV show. He just set up a bunch of cameras and live streamed from his phone nonstop. And then it blew up into this streaming platform where you could go and watch Doctor Who all the time because people were streaming pirated stuff and um, video game content. So when people say, like, Twitch is a video game platform, it's not. It's not about video games. It's about real life. It's our human obsession with reality TV. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's all it is. Like, we want to see people at their rawest real form. Like, YouTube is... I want to see the best of somebody. Yeah. You it's know? edited. This will be edited. Yeah, you want to see over the top, right. super engaging yeah. all the time. Camera angles, all yeah, quality, like, top notch and, and shit. Ex- yeah. like, and effects right. and stuff. And Twitch right. is that. But like, if a streamer is like kind of chill for a little bit during a really hard part of a game, people get that because they they have to focus and they're not there to see this person top notch all the time, yeah. except for Dr. Disrespect. That dude's just wild and nuts. He's like over the top 24 seven and he streams for like six hours. I could not do that. Uh, <laughs> just be on fucking uh, 11 for six hours. Oh, <laughs> it's it's intense, man. And, and then you have streamers like Amonrath who two nights ago and a couple nights before that literally just streamed herself sleeping to 7,000 people. Literally, just laying fully lit with a sleep mask on. And don't get me wrong, she's a gorgeous woman. So that probably helps. And that's a whole other discussion there. Yeah, but, yeah that's a... uh, the, the whole titty streamer uh, oh, discussion. Oh, yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, but, right, And right. that's what, the, that's what her, her viewers are there for. That's the kind of content they want. Whatever she's doing, they just want to see it. Me, it's like, eh, I don't care. Yeah. You go, girl. Yeah. Because she probably made 10 grand that night. Right. Just sleep. She if made, you can do it, fucking do it. She made 10 right? grand in her sleep, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally. And in her you sleep. watched it. <laughs> yeah. It's, this is how you make 10 grand sleeping. Put on a thong and uh, lay here. Yeah. It's, and, and I don't knock anybody for that. If no. You, if no. you can make money doing what you do, do it. I, I don't hate on that either because, yeah. like you said uh, a few minutes ago, that's all of our goal, right? To yep. uh, live our passion and um, hopefully, you know, you know, yield the results from that. So, um, I want to uh, go a little bit different direction here. We're going to go away from the stream, but okay. like, so where are you at with the streaming just right now? Like, where you on know what is that? You're just on hiatus. Like is every... that something you want to come back to doing? Oh yeah, for it, sure. You know? It's something I love doing. Right. It's, it's I've never felt more creative in my life. Okay. Like I've never really been a super creative person, but um, managing this community um, and just having fun, man. Like that's that's my escape escape. Like, I'll come home, pop the green screen up, and turn the lights on just like this, and psh, go. Just do it. So, um, I, I kind of want to switch gears just a little bit here. We, we talked a little bit at the beginning of the podcast with you, um, just your involvement in the community and yeah. giving back and those things. And I, I seen you were doing something with, um, you know, like the pets. I wasn't, yeah. I didn't. Noah uh, Project. Yeah, the Noah Project. And you do some other things. And I know some of that involvement uh, is with like Tony. Right? Yeah. Is he kind of one of the ones that spearheads I, that, or you? No, uh, Tony's you know? on Pound Buddy's board. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of following his footsteps, going with Noah Project. Um, they had asked him first, and obviously conflict of interest because he's on Pound Buddies. Um, so I, my buddy Terry, came to me. He's like, "Hey, Noah Project needs some help." Um, so they're looking for like social media exposure, and they're the only shelter, at least in West Michigan, that's not state funded in any way. They're 110 percent donation funded from the from the community um so when i saw that i was like yeah man sign me up let's do it so we've got a huge comedy event tomorrow which is tuesday the 10th i don't know when this is going to come out but so the march 10th we got this big wags and gags comedy event that's gonna be at the trillium and it's just a fundraiser we're gonna have three comedians there um all kinds of raffles and giveaways and just it's it's a crazy they, they do this quarterly to to raise money um on top of like the adoption fees, which is a small percentage of how much money is made, um, grants and stuff like that help a lot. But like, I see this. Obviously, you know I'm a cat person, right? Oh st- yeah, still a dog. I'm an yeah. animal person. I love animals. Right. Yeah. 
and I saw this and I was like, I need to get in on this. Like, I need to help out as much as I can. So um, hopefully I'll be on the board here within the next couple weeks or so. So Sweet. Yeah. Well, if you make any, you know, developments with that or you need any help with that or... You oh, know we always I mean, need come, volunteers yeah, for so sure. you'd let me know and uh, we'll keep in touch about that because yeah, I'd man. love to be able to help and give back. It's great, and, great cause. Know. I love it. And, and I love animals too. I'm a cat person. Unfortunately, I had to... <laughs> uh, I had to get rid of mine because he was just some behavior problems but Fair. i love that dude to death you know but um he found an awesome home so good good um but yeah so that's that's awesome and that's also just one of those things you know li- living with purpose and, and you know enjoying your passion so i appreciate that about you so we're probably going to get towards the end of this thing i just kind of want to know uh you know what's next for you james like you know what's this year hold and you know kind of you know where you're at man you know right now it's just making sure that the business is lucrative it's successful um one more employee before the end of probably Mar- or april or may um get a little bit more time off to go back to streaming um and that's about it man you know just focus on life travel a little bit more by the end of the year okay I'd like to get back east at least once. I haven't been home since I since I moved up here. I haven't been back to Jersey in 21 years. Um, so that's definitely on the top of the list. And then just make sure Noah's project is good and uh, make sure the business is great. That's really I got my nose to the ground right now, just trying to make sure that's solid. That's the that's the number one thing. So how many employees do you have right now? One at this location. Okay. Yep. And uh, so it's me, Joe, and our employee. Okay. And but. Joe just comes in, swings in, sees how things are going, or does he actually help out oh, with he's, some of the dude, or does I, he go back and forth or he's back and forth between both locations, but I'll tell you that man is a phone repair wizard. <laughs> he has taken some decimated phones that I just couldn't even imagine repairing and just made them look brand new. Dude's a wizard. That's all there is to it. So he's he's our primary phone tech, our employee is our other phone tech, and then I'm the computer guy, and she's learning um, the computer stuff beautifully. She's a quick learner. She's awesome. So you're just putting in a lot of hours there, and you yeah. say you get a ton of business and everything yeah, right now. Yeah. And, and, then, and and you say a ton of hours. Like I'm at maybe 48 to almost 55 hours a week maybe. So it just depends. Like I, Today's my day off. I'm probably going to go in for a little bit anyway just to catch up on some stuff. But, you know, that's what you do. You know. Yeah, especially when you're trying to run a business, fifty five mm-hmm. hours actually actually on that's, the low side. <laughs> yeah, and that, that doesn't count the stuff I'm doing outside of the store, but like right. in the store, that's we're only yeah. open forty eight hours a week, I think. Okay. So yeah, forty eight. Yeah, we're open sun, Monday through Friday, ten to six, and then Saturday and Sunday two to six. So okay. So um, what what all you do there then? Computer builds, computer repairs. Uh, yep. Basically anything like you said with a processor motherboard, yeah. you can kind of. You can kind of figure it out. Smartwatches, uh, phone. I mean, our name is computer, phone, and tablet repair. Okay. Um, but consoles. I've been working on TVs. Oh no shit. Yeah. Uh, if your if your screen's broken in your TV, just throw it away. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. like ninety eight percent of the cost of the, of the of the television. But like power board issues, um, TCON issues, stuff like that, and that's the board that kind of controls all the communication between all the different devices. But um, just anything I can learn and anything that I can repair. Like I just had an Xbox Elite 2 controller come in, like the new one. The kid had broken the joystick. Can't get parts for it. But we're still trying. So yeah. that's a $200 controller. Yeah. So they definitely Jesus. want it repaired. <laughs> that's that's so your Fortnite all, pros, bro. Yeah, I was going to say, $200 controller, and now like what, PS4, you can buy it for $200 with God of War. Like. <laughs> yeah, the, the main reason you spend that kind of money on a controller is all the extra features and durability of it. Oh, okay. So, that yeah. makes sense. It's got extra so. buttons on the back. It's super pro. So, um, you know, you building this strong network in this, you know, being able to shake all these hands and being able to be friends with, you know, tons of people and, and those kind of things. What what are some ways that, you know, have, have helped you or what are some things people can do to c- kind of build their network up and, um, you know, help them – you know, just branch out as a creative or even as a person, you know, because that's really what it all boils down to. So I don't look at myself as a creative because, like I said, I'm not very creative. Um, But be honest about yourself. Like, just fake personas are so easy to see through. Um, I have had my ages and eras of fake persona, you know, trying to be somebody I'm not. Um, But the last five years, like, I've really just, just, just be yourself, man. Like, and if you can't be yourself, just at least be honest. Um, Muskegon especially is unforgiving. Like they will, this town will eat you alive in a heartbeat. If, if you're just, 
if if you're only showing yourself you're only showing one part of yourself to try to get ahead instead of just, be vulnerable i mean that's the yeah. biggest thing and take a shot i mean wayne gretzky michael scott said it best you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take um and i try to live by that like ask that question shake that hand ask for that raise that promotion you know it's just if you don't do it it's never going to happen and nobody life isn't just gonna feed you success you've got to do it you, you've got to jump out there and be willing to take those risks and stuff um as far as networking man just have fun like literally that's the number one thing um luckily i've th- 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 when i started out in 2005 or whatever i didn't realize i would be here i thought i was going to be stuck a- as a bouncer right you know yeah for my entire life but it's grown into some really really awesome opportunities and being a bouncer has helped that's being a door guy man you meet so many people like just you shake hands with people they remember you because they come back all the time you know you let them in for free one you know a few times right yeah yeah and then it turns out you need a lawyer at one point and that one lawyer remembers you goes oh man you've always been so nice you let me in all the time right you build a friendship with them yeah you know, and that might be seen as buying a friendship, but at the same time, I've built so many actual legitimate friendships that way. Me and Tony met at Envy, now out Landmark. You know, I, I was just a door guy, and we found out we have a lot in common. We are really good friends. Like, yeah. we're both Uber nerds. I don't know if Tony lets that be known a lot, but it, the dude plays D&D. He's a huge car guy. Um, yeah. It's just you, 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 you build friendships by shaking those hands and taking covers. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. He's actually uh, one of the guys I would like to have on the show. I know he's super busy, but like, you know, just he loves doing and, stuff like this and, and just seeing him and, and, you know, everything he does, you know, definitely an inspiring. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, before we kind of, like I said, wrap this up. Let's talk about, you know, running a business. You know, what what kind of gumption and, you know, what kind of things mentally do you need to be prepared to really, you know, run a business and, and really say, hey, I'm obviously you're putting, you know, the streaming on the back burner and all that just to make sure you, this business is successful for you and the brand, obviously. But give me a little insight of that, bro. Like you know. Sacrifice is one of the biggest things, like um, not only for your personal time, because you don't have days off. Like I said, my today is my day off, but I'm still wondering what's going on at the store. Is there issues? Is there customer problems? Um, and then with customer problems, like you got to be willing to bite the bullet sometimes. You know, I am infamous for saying the customer is not always right because they're not. No, they're not. Um, <laughs> but sometimes you've got to eat that that cost sometimes to fix a to fix a phone that may or may not have been your fault that broke. You know, if something else happened, or you sometimes you got to bite the bullet on two hundred bucks just to you know make sure you get that five star review because word of mouth is the number one advertising thing. And if a negative review will spread way faster than a positive review. Right. I mean, we've got over 900 five-star reviews like on through all of our social medias. But if you get one bad review, that that's just going to wreck you. Like, yeah. I've seen it shut businesses down like that. Especially if the one that's like the last one and it's on the top, then they read that and they're like, well, fuck this place. You know what I mean? Like that's the that's the top one. You could have 999, but that thousandth one could be a and one it do- star. And it doesn't matter <laughs> if that person has a social media or not. Like if they have a presence, if it's worded the right way, it's going to go viral. Yeah. It, it's going to go crazy. Like that lady from Cracker Barrel who got fired. Like that's still, oh, a, yeah. still a running meme to this yeah. day. And it's like that that's always going to be hounding Cracker Barrel forever, you know? And, you know, places like Art Van closing. Yeah. You know, they're they're probably getting slammed with negative reviews. Which, not that they care because they're closing. Yeah. But that's, that, that's the kind of stuff that will destroy you. And th- I mean, that's kind of the way of retail right now anyway, you know, just with the way way everything is, it's it's uh, it, it's tough because we're going into this information age, this I want it now and I want it delivered to yeah. the doorstep. I don't really even I love shopping at home. Thing. And don't be wrong, I, l- I love small businesses. I, obviously, I am one. Right, yeah. Um, and I try to support local as much as I can, but man, I like shopping on Amazon. Yeah. And it, it, you can't fault somebody for that. No, you can't. It's You have to adapt and just like the way the radio is kind of going out. Yeah. You know, everything yep. is Spotify and Google Play Music. Well, um, I, I can listen to it when I want to. Yeah. I don't have to wait for it to, you know, and it's and just the way of the old medium, the newspaper. I hop in my car and I drive three blocks and all I hear is commercials. I don't want the radio. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I pay for Spotify Premium or I pay for Google Play Music because I don't want ads. I just, I want my music the way I want it 
You know, I want my YouTube the way I want. I pay for YouTube premium because I don't like ads. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so switching into that, um, kind of talking about advertisement. I, what what are the advertisement? What are you doing around Crashmasters? And and you know, I I kind of seen the cool little. Uh, I like the uh, the picture of the crack screen and the guy. Like I thought that was pretty nifty. But Joe is our what, main marketing guy, so he's doing all of that. Um, and he's he's a genius when it comes to it. I mean, obviously we've got a huge library of clip art and stuff that he uses or stock images, but. He comes up with really, really great ideas to to motivate people to share our posts. Obviously, like share and comment uh, giveaways are like the number one way to on Facebook to go. It was they're so effective that Facebook tried to limit it at a time. They were like, you can't do those anymore. Um, it's not allowed. And then because you're not paying us, because you're not paying us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're not paying for this yeah, exposure, and right. that's a great way you give you do a giveaway, and people just they jump on it, depending on you know what it is, and you got to find that right thing that makes people want to go. Man, that's something I really want. Um, so social media is like 90% of our advertising word of mouth, a hundred percent. Um, like I said, those reviews are really, really important. You know, we, we will, we just want to make sure that you're happy before you leave the store. So that way, when you write a review, it's honest and you, you tell us what you loved about it. You know, we would definitely want to hear what's wrong, but we want to make sure that that review is good, you know? So we just want to give you the best service possible. So word of mouth, social media, um, we had a billboard, our first one in 13 years. Um, we just ran that for a little while, just tested out. Once again, one of those old styles of yeah, advertising. The that, old mediums that you're just kind of throwing money away because not a lot of people are driving down the highway and they're like, oh, shit, I need to get my computer fixed. Yeah, I, I, see, I look at billboards all the time. I forget them in five seconds. Well, because you see the next one, too, after that, and you're like, oh. And then half of the ones around here are just about, like, getting heart surgery and your knee replaced and shit. So it's like, <laughs> or, well, or, I kind of know where to go I'll, for that. So. Say, I think it's, I think it's Lasco that does the really, the viral ones like in a relationship. I was wondering about that billboard for like three weeks before they finally put their logo on it and stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, there was another one that they did, I think last year it was about, he, um, about about their girl your girlfriend's too hot or is your girlfriend okay. hot? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what, said, yeah. what is this? Yeah, and then yeah. like a week later they put their logo on it. I was like, that's, that's that's good that's that's good billboard advertising because i was wondering what that's about yeah the curiosity style marketing yeah and not, it's like not the pounding of the the constant message you know yeah it's just come by for me it's like is your girlfriend hot wait what right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about yeah. dude <laughs> So, uh, how do we get a hold of you, man? Like, you know, how do we get a hold of the business? Uh, anything you want to say uh, at the end? This is kind of your spot to say whatever you want to say before you kind of give your socials and all that shit, man. You know, anything you want to speak on on this podcast? Anything uh, ideas you have or you, man? What are you doing? What Other than I this, doing? what are you doing? What is your what is what are you focusing on? What's the next big project for EDP? Well. Um, you know, I kind of built this studio with the the artist in mind. Like, hey, I'm going to record people and all that, but like. Once again, it's it's hard to find people that aren't hobbyists. Yeah, you know, hard to find people that want to pay cash in hand. Yep. And I'm not saying it can't be done. Yeah. It can be done, but you know, it's just hard nowadays too. With like everybody can have a laptop and record themselves and then put it out and distribute it. Uh, and all that, Billie you know? Eilish so, and her brother, right? Exactly. Did Literally it in the room. You know, swept uh, the Grammys with a bedroom recording. I mean. They did have some other people mix it. I just putting that out there. Fair. If you didn't know that, they, they, no, <laughs> they fair, had fair. some powerful, uh, you know, mixers and masters on that project. And you still so, need that, yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, I appreciate you asking that. But my main goal right now, man, is just to license my music. You know, I, I put a lot of beats out, and you know, I, I want to get my stuff on video games, Netflix, all that. So I'm figuring out how to license it, and then just build my beat business. I said you wanted, I saw you yeah. want to do some soundtrack stuff, right? Yeah, yeah that's that's lit, man. You know, that's awesome. So you know, and just build my beat business online, my email list, my sales funnel, getting all that stuff together right now, like the click funnel style. You know, yeah, building all the sales funnels and that. What get eyes on you? it, emails and that kind of stuff, because. You know, I I don't have to wait for the three guys to maybe show up that want to come over here and record and hope I can make 150 bucks this <laughs> week and maybe they don't show up or maybe they can't pay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm kind of over that. I kind of want to just, you know, I have a few artists that I work with and I want to, you know, I try to work with them on some marketing and stuff like that. But not everybody is on the same page as you either. You know what I mean? You'll, no, you'll yeah. know that when you try to have a working relationship with somebody like, and you probably know that and you've probably known that for a long time yeah. because of all the people you've worked with, right? Mm -hmm. You know? So you don't always see eye to eye, right? Exactly. But going you know, back to that Twitch thing, like you're doing exactly what I said. You're making engaging content on other platforms. This is super important to build your brand. So I'm super 
I was super proud when I started watching this, man. I'm super honored to be here for well, real. Thank you for coming through and uh, thanks for watching it. You know, and that's part of the thing. You know, the the ultimate goal is the beat business, right? You know, yeah. so but they need to know who I am, and also. You know, like I said, I I love giving back and I love to be able to put other people on platform too. You know, it's not always just about, hey, look at me. You know, it's like with the podcast, what can I give? What, how can I help? You know what I mean? It's not always about what can I sell you? Like, hey, get to know me because, you know, that's, that's how you build relationships. Speaking of getting to know you, how does Mr., because when I met you, it was Infinite Design. Yeah. How does Mr. Metalhead become a hip hop beat producer? I, I, that's the one thing that's, I've always wanted to ask you that because like I've always known you as like where we first met you were like the metal guy yeah. and I didn't know a lot about you so I, and I found out that you started doing beats and hip hop and I was like what is this well it was just kind of a natural transformation we always kind of wrapped and stuffed on the side because getting right. getting five guys together is always tough it always has been tough for the 20 years I've been doing it you right. know what I mean so it's like in the meantime what can we do can we fuck around with this computer keyboard and oh people are rapping and all this and we made a lot of shitty beats and a lot of <laughs> shitty rap you know what i mean yeah but yeah. over about the last two three years i'm like what can i do and then i started watching the tutorials started really just focusing on the craft of you know how can i get good at this you know and it's something i'm passionate about is making music yeah. but it's a lot easier for me to sit here i can make a whole composition drums bass melodies and all this stuff and 25 to 30 minutes but if i get together with my band we've been working on a fucking record for six months you know yeah. what i'm saying oh, it's yeah. like getting you know, equal minds together right? yeah, i know how that works if, if you're a musician you want to be a musician right you yep. know and you want to get better so that's that's kind of how that transformation came about you know and then i, I did a lot of the i mean you i think you were at maybe a few of my shows too when i rapped and all that yep. kind of stuff you know yeah, but yeah. it's just all natural progression of being a musician just in general and, and wanting to be able to explore different avenues not you know? pigeonholing yourself exactly. into one thing yeah for know? sure and it, it helps you learn you know other things too you know about the metal or, or about you know you can apply those different things in all the genres so well i appreciate you uh asking me that man. yeah for Thank sure you. so uh what's your socials man how can we get a hold of you and uh pretty much everything you is... want people to get a hold of you <laughs> <laughs> like, if, if don't it's... fucking get a hold of me but <laughs> if it's computer related always always message me yeah. or call the store or we've got two social media pages uh crash masters uh computer phone and tablet repair or norton shores crash masters computer phone and tablet repair both mouthfuls. Um, you can call us, 231-773-7673, 231-375-5280. Message us on the pages. Um, everything for me personally, if it's Slevin Calevera, it's normally me. It's K-A-L-E-V-E-R-A. Um, just Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. I've got a couple. Follow my cat, King Henry Chunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get that one in there. Yeah, he's a cute yeah. little fucker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just James Seville. Just follow me anywhere. Just search me. Um, I've I've got a pretty ugly mug. You can catch me anywhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that being said, uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I appreciate that. And uh, follow you guys, this guy. Yeah, follow me. I appreciate that. Uh, you guys will see the uh, last two podcasts come up on the screen right now if you want to check those out. I really appreciate it. And uh, much love to you guys, man. Peace out. <laughs>